greetings and collectors, this is me, Daniel Lee 1000, back again with another Star Wars The Black Series figure review. Today we're going to be having a look at a figure which I did have on pre-order along with a load of other figures because they're all exclusives and a sort of individual releases because I've put them all on pre-order and there's like literally one figure that the company's waiting on getting on in stock. It's all been sort of held up, which is fine, that's not their fault, I can wait for all the figures and to be fair I was tempted to get a second copy of this figure anyway and I just happened to see it today and I was like, oh go on then. But that's all side information really that you don't need to know. Regardless, today we're going to have a look at Jackson, who I think most Figgy Fiends and Star Wars collectors have been waiting for a very, very long time. Mainly in terms of 334 inch, just because there was a big, I say big, it was a very niche demand. Figureheads in the Star Wars community and sites campaigning for a Jackson to be made in 334 inch. Quite gutting though for 334 inch collectors is the fact that the first time we get a Jackson and he's released in 6 inch Black Series scale, which is a little bit annoying, I'm sure or hopefully they do release one in 334 inch on a vintage collection card, but we'll have to wait and see. Nonetheless though, we've got a six inch figure of him, like with all these exclusive comic book figures, of which I have sort of pre-talked about in a video, link will be up there somewhere. They are, of course, based on comic book characters or appearances of characters, you know, the costume style that they wore in them comics. And to match that, they have the packaging to go with. This one's the only one that's sort of based off of more recent comics. This is from the IDW Star Wars Adventures series. The other ones are from the Dark Horse, pre-Disney effectively, era of Star Wars comics. So these figures come in a slightly different packaging style. It's a bit bulkier. It's more like a book feel in that you can uh, sort of open the front and see the figure. Like I said, this one features artwork from the IDW series. You've got Jackson there, Lando, 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm because it is the year of celebrating that. Jackson, a little bit of legal garb there. On the side, you've got some black and grey and white imagery of Jackson from some of the comic panels running along the top there and sides and the bottom as well. Also a bit of a feral eyed Jackson as well on the spine just there um, with the Star Wars The Black Series logo and then at the top you've just got uh, his name and on the back you've of course got the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm Timeline and uh, obviously this bit here is highlighted in Legends because he is a Legends character. Commemorate the first 50 years of Lucasfilm with figures inspired by Star Wars books and comics. A ton of legal garb on the back there. And then on the inside of this packaging, I have kept the figure inside the packaging, I will be opening it for this review. And um, we've got the figure there, so it Star Wars the Black Series, sort of more conventional style of uh, Black Series front. Uh, Hasbro, Jackson, and then nice picture of Jackson hiding from Dengar just there, as well as as a bio on the character itself. That's pretty cool. So let's get this figgy out of the box and take a look at him, shall we? And so with the figgy opened up, here he is, looking absolutely awesome. It's about damn time Hasbro did a Jackson figure. Admittedly, I would have preferred to have seen him in 334 inch first rather than Black Series, just because I think there's more characters that are warranted to have a Black Series release first before this guy. But nonetheless, I'm kind of pretty chuffed they have done him. In terms of having a figure of him finally, it's really, really cool. Let's take a look a little bit closely at this guy, a bit of focus. As I did say in my uh, video, sort of talking about all the figures in this sort of assortment of exclusives, the head sculpt is more so based on the sort of dark horse drawing of Jackson, whereas the costume itself is a little bit more based on the IDW look that you see on the packaging here. Um, so rather than having a really cartoony face that's not gonna fit in with your all black series figures, they've kept it a little more grounded and it uh, does fit in with your other Star Wars figures. You know, you want it to look a little bit realistic. Um, so he's got that realistic bunny rabbit or green bunny rabbit looking face. He looks very, very ill. Um, big ears, so it's a completely new head school, although there are some other parts that this figure does borrow from. The body is actually from the Wave 1 Luke Skywalker in X-Wing gear. It's just been repainted red and uh, had the, the chest box removed and he's just got this new sort of piece here which is plastic and it is uh, glued onto the figure but it's uh, very soft plastic so it's not going to hinder with articulation. Likewise with the arms, they're also from that figure. 
um, just again repainted red with the grey on the gloves there. In terms of the legs, this borrows legs from the Luke Skywalker farm boy figure. Again, repainted in red and then given sort of a grey white boots and leg wrapping. So there's a lot of reuse, um, you know, I think it's fine for Hasbro to do that if it serves a purpose and it does work for a figure like this. It does keep the cost down, so I'm not going to really grumble about that too much just because it does feel like a completely new figure, really. The blasters, I'm pretty sure, are from another figure. I can't think off the top of the head. I think they're Han Solo's blasters. I think. I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me on that. Um, and they do sit inside his holsters. They're the only two accessories you get with him. One of the hands has a trigger finger, whereas the other doesn't. I would have liked it if they did sort of sculpt in or sort of chisel away at that finger so you can have a separate sort of trigger finger but nonetheless um, that's just how it is but those blasters are pretty much the same and they just sit in his holster quite nicely like so and that's really it in terms of accessories i can't think what else they could really include i'm not that clued up on the character uh in terms of articulation for jackson he has a ball joint on a ball hinge so he can look up and down like so he has ball jointed shoulders Ball jointed elbows, ball jointed wrists, ball jointed torso, which is a little bit limited, uh, ball jointed hips, swivels at the tops of the thighs, double hinged knees, and ball jointed ankles with rocker joint. Could chop. Yeah, you can get him some really good action poses, which is what you really want from a figgy. Um, but I think the thing that really draws me to this guy is just how different and bizarre looking he is. And he's really going to stand out on your figgy shelf, that's for sure. He's definitely a talking point of which I always love having these sorts of pieces in your collection. Just stuff that people wouldn't really sort of know. And it's like, is that really a Star Wars character? It's like, yes, yes it is. And it's George Lucas' least favourite Star Wars character. His words, his own words there. But yeah, he's, he's a very odd character. Very, very Bucky O'Hare in his sort of aesthetic and vibe. And you can see how they've maybe slightly copied that. Right on some of that franchise appeal. Just really, really bizarre. Um, it's just a big green bunny, really. And we've got a figure of him finally after years and years of people petitioning for it. And I'm chuffed. I'm really, really chuffed. I think it's very impressive that they managed to make a new figure using bits from others, you know, with minimal new tooling. I think it's fine when Hasbro does that, particularly when it works as good as this, really. And it does have a very sort of retro vibe to it in terms of its colours and paint scheme. You know, it does feel like a comic book character, um, but also fits in with your collection at the same time. I love it, love it when Hasbro can do that, when they can take something that's animated or cartoony and give it that realistic spin that makes it almost believable, almost like we have seen it on screen before in, you know, live action form. So yeah, it's a weird one for me to recommend. If you have any affinity or if like me, you sort of remember how much people wanted this figure to be made or you yourself wanted this figure for the longest time, then naturally you're gonna really want to jump on and get this figure. At the same time though, I can understand why people are a bit like, I'm really not bothered. Either way, it's up to you. Let me know in the comments down below what camp you sort of fall in. I feel like I fall in the one that's just like, it's so weird that I needed it and I've been waiting for it for the longest time. <laughs> to see if Hasbro would actually ever do it. And well, here it is in the flesh and I'm really, really chuffed they finally did do him. So I hope you enjoyed having a little look at this figgy. There's really not too much to say about him. Pretty basic, really. Just the colours stand out and really do pop on him quite nicely. But that is pretty much it. That's me done. And this is me, Daniel Lee Sunfails, and sign out. Thank you very much for watching.